um, good enough to come. So it was that important enough for me to come. And I think um, the reason of us were late was because I kind of prayed for a couple more hours of sleep. So <laughs> I, 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 I'm glad that I got a couple more hours of sleep once we actually got there. I was knocked out of my car and I came out of the parking lot. But um, that was just um, very much important for me to make sure I got there no matter how sick I was and I was um, kind of in some pain. But I'm glad that um, we pushed through. Um, once we got on the buses, I think that everyone was just so, it was it was just a good spirit in the, on the buses. We actually got on bus three, bus one, and a couple of buses kind of talking to people and interviewing people, and um, everybody was just in a really good mood, good spirits, and I think that was um, something that was very positive for everyone um, going forward on the trip. We, um, I think it's really about our youth, and um, Tasia got to interview um, Mr. Rondell, who, Rondell Buckner, who bought um, our youth on the buses and just made it a point to make sure that they were educated about what was going on. During the trip, he didn't stop at any moment he could get to educate the kids. We, they were holding up a sign about um, Jimmy Lee Johnson and, and the Masons were, and he stopped and said, do you guys know who that is? The kids said no. So he said, he said to the Masons, can you explain to them um, who this is, and so it was just a, a walking, living history lesson for these kids, and they don't know now, they may not realize it now, but um, you know, 50 years from now, when they're going um, on, you know, 100, 100 years past, they're going to um, remember that experience and hopefully take more youth, because to me, it is about, to us, it's about the youth, um, you know, older people, our parents, our grandparents, they know what happened, and they were there, a lot of people, but um, being able to pass it on to the youth so they can continue to pass it on so that they don't forget or looking at the parallels between Ferguson and Michael Brown, Eric Garner in New York, Trayvon Martin, and the parallels to, to um, 50 years ago, um, it's, it's pretty eerie about what's going on. So um, it's a great education lesson. So um, again, I really appreciate you guys putting it on. And when we went to Montgomery um, to eat, um, the one thing I wish we could have done is maybe go to the Capitol Steps and have all five buses of people get off and take one big picture of us on the Capitol Steps, since that's where, of course, the march ended. Uh, but I did like the fact that we were able to stop in Montgomery to eat. Um, and then once we got there, um, it was just amazing. I think it was, I was there on Sunday. Of course, we were there Sunday. We actually had a crew there on Saturday, too. And they said Saturday was even more crowded than it was on Sunday. And um, although we were reporting it, we still got to meet so many people. We actually even ran into the CSU students that we had covered before they left. And we actually bumped into them there at the, um, Brown Chapel Avenue uh, Church. So um, we got to talk to them about their experience beforehand and afterwards. So that was really great. Um, once we got to the bridge, going across wasn't that bad. Um, coming back across the bridge, it was a little tight and um, was, you know, shoulder to shoulder. We were stopped. It probably took us maybe 15 minutes only to cross the bridge the first time. But to come back across, it was 30, 40 minutes um, at least to come back across. Um, one thing that I, I that concerned me was that so many people were on the bridge, as if they didn't expect it to be that crowded. People were complaining, and that kind of did annoy me because I said, you know, this is that's not what it's about. People were complaining about, oh, why are all these people here, and it's too crowded, and you're going the wrong way. And I just felt like people should have just, you know, kind of took it in, take your time going across the bridge. You have hundreds, of, tens of thousands of people in this small city, and you are you're, you kind of think that it's not going to go that that you think that's going to go smoothly, but it's not. So um, I appreciate the people that came, had <coughs> patience, and didn't complain. That was the one thing that um, kind of annoyed me. But I, I think um, overall, everybody got a good experience. Um, I, I love that before we started on our bus ride, we, we prayed for the travelers, and um, we sang some, some songs, church songs, Negro spirituals, if you will. And um, going across the bridge, people did chants and songs and celebrations. So I really, really like that. And um, I'm going to play one of Tasia's pieces that she did um, while after we finished everything, we actually had to do a 6 o'clock, we did a 6 o'clock live newscast um, report um, right before the buses pulled off again. And then once we got on the buses, we were banging out a couple of stories that we had to air for a 10 and 11 o'clock newscast. So we were on the bus, we had the capability to um, do live shots anywhere with a portable backpack that we had. And then we had the capability to um, cut down hours and hours of interviews and videos that we had cut it down to just a two minute story um, that we had to do, you know, on a bumpy bus ride and um, with people talking and everything. So she did a really good job of putting together a couple of pieces that we aired that night. And then we aired three pieces the following day on the TV. So I'll play um, one of those real quick and then I'll let Tasia talk about her experience there. And uh, we'll need the lights.
Convex Protex investigation is committed to providing you with the best resolution to your assignment need. Short weekend in Alabama commemorating the 50th anniversary of the Selma demonstration. Hundreds of Columbus residents were there, part of the crowd, remembering the turning point in the civil rights movement. Newsletter nice Tasha Reed is back from Selma. She joins us now in our newsroom with more on this humbling experience. Tasha? It truly was an amazing experience to be among so many people rallying together for the same cause. Take a look at our trip. Followers that you watch over as we traveled early on Sunday morning. Hundreds of Columbus residents loaded into five coach buses, traveling more than 130 miles to Selma, Alabama. The Muscogee County Democratic Party organized this historic trip. But I'm doing this to make history again. The group's first stop was for breakfast in Montgomery at the Farmer's Market Cafe, close to the Capitol steps, where the march ended 50 years ago. We have to honor what our forefathers did for us. The next stop, Selma, Alabama. The group stopped by the historic Brown Chapel a &E Church for a pre-march rally, hearing from the Reverend Al Sharpton. Attorney General Eric Holder, Jesse Jackson, and several other notable speakers. That's where we also ran into a foot soldier who marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in 1965. They uh, shot tear gas on them, ran over with horses, and they even got mad at the horses because they wouldn't fight. Mr. Yeah. Edward Kidd was a part of the SCLC, or Southern Christian Leadership Conference, the same organization as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Ambassador Andrew Young. You go down to take a zoning test that they give you, and they would actually have a portion on now how many jelly beans in a jar, how many bubbles in a bar. So you had to ask them, course, then the white people would be back in a room laughing at you while you're trying to figure out the course. Kidd says President Obama honored the foot soldiers, giving them medals during his trips to Selma. Columbus State students were also at the rally. They told News Leader 9 they feel the power of voting, especially after their visit. I feel that our ancestors fought for this right to vote, so why would you not use that power to vote and make a difference, make a change in your community? Then we marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. We shall Joining tens and thousands of people marching to commemorate Bloody Sunday. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 and the march from Selma to Montgomery. It was such a great experience. Now, coming up on the news at 5 30, we talked to a group of young boys who also took this trip to Selma. And I'm Tasha Reed for WTVM News Leader 9. Mm -hmm. Coles has your yes for a little. Choosing the right plumbing company can help take the stress and worry out of an emergency repair. Mr. Reuter is available. Ready? Yeah! Hundreds of Columbus residents took a journey on coast buses to Selma, Alabama this weekend, including six young boys. Ronzel Buckner, the director of Turnaround Columbus, mentors these boys in hopes of making them great citizens in the future. Well, we carried them to see the movie uh, about three weeks ago. It's, a, it's, it's very important that our kid understand the history and also understand the sacrifice that was made for them in order to achieve. It was a good movie, but sad at the same time because people had to get beat for our rights and stuff. And now, today, we can walk across the bridge, walk across the bridge without getting beat. Do y'all know? Do y'all know what those men are standing for? On our trek, Mr. Buckner stopped at any chance to educate the boys, including the Masons. The gentleman's here was in our community when the Ku Klux Klan was there. So these are some of the strong men within your community. And we marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, ten thousand other people of all colors and races, ages, and creeds. And what they did here inspired us that we might face every Edmund Pettus Bridge in our lives. Immediately after, the boys told me they were proud to be able to be a part of history. I feel powerful because people never own that they wish they learned for us. My experience today was about how we had to walk across the bridge and nothing happened because of the people, because of the people who died for us um, a long time ago. Let's celebrate the anniversary of Selma uh, and the people who got killed on this day. 
I also got a chance to talk to Mr. Buckner after he marched across the bridge. He tells me he thinks the boys learned a lot while on this trip. Mind-blowing experience. I mean, it's like you cannot believe what you really see. I've never seen so many people before that participated in one event. Hey, Mama! <laughs> <laughs> So it was a long trip, but it was worth every second. Coming up on the news at 6, we look at similarities between recent protests like Michael Brown and Eric Garner, and this one, this one. All right. Cole says uh, you're here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was just a very life-changing experience for me. Um, growing up, you know, we, we learned about Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement. But I personally didn't learn about Bloody Sunday when I was growing up. So it was just amazing. And so to learn about this and then to actually experience it 50 years later and to go across the bridge with so many people. And then especially with the young boys and they were able to watch the movie. And of course, if I didn't know about it, they I definitely didn't know about it. But they were able to watch the movie and then see it for themselves. So it was great for me to be able to put these pieces together and then share them to other people. Um, I had some of my friends comment on my videos like, oh my gosh, you know, I wish I would have been there. They also, um, you know, these things, some things just aren't taught in school anymore. Um, but I just had an amazing time and like Janelle said, I just want to thank you guys for allowing us to come with you guys. Um, you guys did a great job putting it together. Um, and I hope you guys had an amazing time like we did. <laughs> <laughs> did anyone have any, any questions or comments? Um. Right. Did you? Um, I assume you also talked to uh, people who like were from like other places as well, who had come to uh, to, to Selma, um, and especially people who are like uh, themselves involved with um, like with, with the with the process itself and um, for for the for the marches in the first place, right? When you when you got across the bridge, um, did, did you also cover like the other side of, of the bridge where like um, I mean apparent like there was like say a, vo a voting rights museum uh, there? I, I didn't go into it. I don't know if they were open or that day, but I walked past it and I saw people taking pictures and stuff. But I didn't get a chance to go in. Uh, and what, under the time constraints, we really want to make sure we got to the buses, but got yeah. to the buses on time. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was one thing we did discuss. We wanted to maybe go into the museum and do. Um, some other stories just on Selma, um, like the first piece mentioned their poverty mm -hmm. levels and things like that. There's so many other stories out of Selma that we wish we could have done if we could have had you know, a couple of days to spend there right. and um, do more in-depth coverage. But mm -hmm. we, we kind of wanted to focus ours on the locals that the local. went and right. you know, why the locals thought it was so important. And I know you guys started off with two buses and ended up with five and then actually had to turn away more than 60 people, if I'm correct. So we could have had a, you know, a six right. bus at least. Mm -hmm. So um, sure. I, I 